Welcome to the Uncomfortable is OK podcast. I'm joined again today by my mate, James Brummer-Taylor. James joined us for episode 300 a couple of months back. It seems like a while ago now, JBT, but we were thinking of getting you back, having a little bit of a chat about today, about strategy, about personal growth and all of that good stuff coming into 2023. How are you going today, man? Yeah, good, bro. Going, going well and yeah, looking forward to wrapping up 2022 and jumping into 2023. Yeah, yeah. It's, so for you, is it a a nice kind of easy transition into 2023 or are you looking to create some pivots or what's what's your plan for over the over the new year? Yeah, I think on the uh, on the business front, it's pretty much 2022 will blur into or bleed straight into 2023. A lot of the stuff I'm involved in is yeah, it's the busy time of year, so we won't we won't get too much respite in that regard. Probably more on a, a personal side though. Like I find the the calendar year is always a good time to yeah hit the reset, whether that's a hard reset or a soft reset, and and think about what you want to actually achieve in the new year so on the personal side i'll definitely be giving some thought as to you know what are the what are the personal growth things that i want to achieve Mm. yeah and it's uh, this time of year kind of as you come into the end of one year and the start of another calendar year it's a time where a lot of people do reflect and a lot of people do set some set some resolutions or set some intentions or set some goals or kind of however they want to do it and use it as that that point that change point for them a lot of resolutions a lot of intentions and a lot of whatever you want to call them don't go longer than about two or three weeks they they fall by the wayside and i think one of the re- the big reasons for that is that often we don't set them particularly strategically uh, we don't we don't really kind of think deeply about hey what are what are the changes that we want to make why do we want to do it we just say oh that would be nice to do Obviously, I, I spend a lot of time in the health space. People kind of pick all of these different health health kicks to jump into for the new year without thinking too deeply about them. So I wanted to have a conversation with you today about about strategy and about picking the right things to be to be working on. And I know that you do a lot of that from a business perspective as well. When you work with businesses, it's like it's picking the right stuff to to work on first, and then everything else is easier after that because if you don't pick those right things early on then you just kind of start banging your head into against a wall so i'm interested mate how do you like how do you think about strategy to start with and how do you think about setting a strategy yeah well i tend to think i play a lot in the sort of team environment so i tend to be not too individualized Mm. Uh, and so you then got to think about well, not only what are you doing as an individual, but what is the like, what's the overall, what are the other things that you're you're working in and, and involved in? I mean, that might come back to some of your stuff where you're talking about someone makes a grand New Year's resolution that just goes nowhere because it probably hasn't been contextualized within like everything else that you're doing in your life, whether it's your like personal life or your business life. So you kind of got to figure out how, what's actually going to work and what's actually going to fit in. And then also what are the like goals and outcomes that you're wanting to achieve? So like, if you take a couple of extremes, you're going to go and lift real heavy weight. That's probably not going to be that good if you're actually wanting to run a marathon later in the year, because you'll just have a complete disconnect with what you actually want to do and what you're doing. Uh, so yeah, thinking about kind of those things, I think it's important. But in terms of the the strategy from a, the, I guess, a more personal perspective, really think, thinking about more like what it is, you, what are you, where are you trying to get to maybe in several years time, but also like, what do you want to get to and like break the year down into like quarters and how, what do you actually want to achieve through the course of the year so you can actually see that you're making some kind of progress and i kind of always find that if you're doing something that's fun that you find fun then you're probably going to do it whereas like you jump onto some of these health things and discover that mm, it's not as much fun as you thought it might be and then 
you're like, oh, well, I stopped doing it because I actually don't find it fun. You don't want to get up yeah. and do it in the morning. Instagram sh- sold you a lie with all of those smiley, super tanned people enjoying whatever it is that they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. The old snapshot in time. No, no one else has any context of everything else that's going on in the background. Yeah. 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 When you're like, when you're working with businesses and you're setting that kind of that strategic vision for your three, five, 10 year block, like, do you have a process that you go through with them to do that and, and to kind of help them pull out where they want to go over that period of time rather than your kind of six week bikini body boot camp business blitz? <laughs> Yeah, from a from a strategy perspective, you kind of have to pull it back to you know what what are the markets that they'd be wanting to play in? What are you what are you trying to achieve? Is it a revenue growth? Is it a costability? Like, what are all of these things that the business is trying or wanting to achieve, and then start to shape the the strategy around that? Unless you're going for a real like much, much longer term strategy and then you need to take a, a longer term horizon and then build it all the way back to well, what do you need to be doing today? But in, in all cases, the stuff you're working on today needs to be hung off a strategy that's pegged in sometime in the future, whether it's like a 10 year strategy or a five year strategy or a you know, one, two, three year strategy. You want to hang it off that strategy so that you know what things you're working on yeah yeah and i think that's really important when we're like when we're starting to think about kind of resolutions and setting a strategy for ourselves for for making changes thinking okay cool who do i want to be as a person and like picking a picking a time period whether it's 10 years where it's whether it's 30 years whether it's whether it's 18 months and and looking at it like you said kind of across the board like wh- what are the important markers for me um to use like a, a health model te whare tapa whare, like what are the important health model markers for me from a, a physical perspective from a, a mental perspective from a, a a social perspective a spiritual perspective from a work perspective as well and i think like you, you mentioned that you do a lot of work with teams I think we we shoot ourselves in the foot a little bit if we're just setting a personal strategy just for ourselves, because very few of us are hermits. Like we <laughs> we interact with with people. A lot of people that listen to this podcast have they got families. And they've got they've got coworkers as well. So whatever you do is going to affect those people around you, and also those those people around you are going to affect you and what you're able to do as well it's kind of it's starting to think about okay what are the across all areas of my life where are the the opportunities for growth and where where are the opportunities for change for me and then looking at okay say you're say you're a weightlifter and you want to you want to transition to being a marathon runner as looking okay cool I'm a I'm a jack dude at the moment. I'm probably going to find it a little bit challenging to go out and and pound the pavement for a for a marathon or an ultra marathon or whatever it is that I want to do. Yeah. I'm going to set myself a, a goal and and say, hey, 12 months time, 18 months time, I'm going to go and 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 run this marathon and, and build build up to it. But then I think it, it it's also important, like those those points you you picked out about. Okay, what are the what are those markers that you're going for from a business perspective? But also thinking about like why are you going for that? What is your what is your motivation around that? Like why have you picked that particular number? Like yep. you want twenty five percent business growth over the next eighteen months. Sweet. Why do you care about that? Like, what does 25% give you? Like, why didn't you pick 20%? Why didn't you pick 30%? And just asking yourself that question, like, why? Why do I want to do this? And paying attention to to the answers that you give yourself as well, because, like, you talked about making things fun before, and I think that's really, really important. 
when you're when you're doing anything, whether it's business, whether it's health, whether it's some other kind of of growth for yourself or the for the people around you. But also like making it meaningful as well. Because not every day is fun. Like you would do like the the work that you do, I'm sure a lot of it is fun, but a lot of it is grind as well. Yeah, yeah. And you know, talk to heaps of people that have managed to be successful somewhere around the chats, whether it's in business or in, in sport, anything that requires high performance. The the amount of grind they've actually done to get some outcome or achieve something. And I don't know, you, we, you were talking about Instagram before where you see that the outcome, but there's lots of those examples of you like suddenly see an overnight success. You, every so often you might see one of those kind of unicorn overnight success kind of things, but most of them are born out of a lot of hard work. And then you go, well, there's going to be a bunch of hard work. So what are the, like the underlying motivators or the, you know, the inherent motivators that are just going to get you to do it when, when it's really tough, what gets you to jump up again and, and keep on going, either now, you know, it's a, it's a real grind because it's, it's only going through that grind that'll, that'll get you there. Um. I often think about the sort of 10,000 hour rule. It's not until you sort of clock the 10,000 hours that you've really got to a point where you're genuinely good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And I was listening to a podcast with a lady called Alexi Pappas the other day, who's a, she's an athlete and she's a founder of Tracksmith over in the US. And, and one of the things that she said is like, if you're working on something meaningful to you, you probably expect that. A third of the time, it's going to be awesome and you're going to be having a great time. A third of the time, it's going to be okay. And a third of the time, it's actually going to be a bit shit and you've just got to, yeah. you've just got to get through it. And that's, that's why kind of picking something meaningful to keep you going through that third of the time where it's a little bit shit is, is really important. And you mentioned kind of inherent motivations before. I'm just wondering how, like, how you think about that and how you think about kind of matching that those up to to your vision and to your direction you know some of that comes back to that kind of fun factor so like if you if you find it fun and that's what you like doing then that's probably going to motivate you whereas if you just don't find it fun then the likelihood of you actually doing it is pretty pretty low uh, and it's different for different people and then, yeah, and then connecting it to those overall goals. Yeah. The, the weightlifter marathon run is a great kind of diametric pose kind of thing. You am likely to be able to do both just because there are physical characteristics to perform well at either of those, uh, sporting, those sporting outcomes or sporting events are just completely different. Like the, your physique has to be so different that you have to pick one, you know, if you're going to train for running, you're going to have to do a lot of miles. Whereas if you want to lift heavy weights, you're going to have to push through some, some pretty hectic workout sessions, probably doing a lot of them by yourself in less than ideal conditions <laughs> and trying to get it to work. And you obviously need to eat a lot if you're, Doing if you're doing something like that, so there's, there's a whole heap of things that that go into it. So, are you actually going to enjoy doing a large number of those things? Not not a hundred percent of them, because there'll be some things that are just hard to do or you don't really like. But are are you actually going to do them when when the going gets tough? Will you actually get up and do it, or will, at that point will you flag and go, "No, this is not me." Yeah, and then I think thinking around like if you're in a family situation, yeah, can you actually do it within the family context? So are you actually going to be able to get up and, I mean, if you're doing marathon training, you're going to be pounding the pavement for two to four hours some days. So can you fit that into the rest of your life or is it 
just not going to fit in because there's so many other competing priorities. Mm. Yeah. Do you so, need to yeah. have a, a conversation with your spouse to say, hey, is it okay if I carve out a little bit of time to go and do this on the weekend while you look after the kids? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and vice and vice versa, they, they may also be wanting to do something as well. So how's it, how's it, how's it all going to work? How's it all going to come together? Yeah. Just thinking about the, the practicalities of the mm. as, as well. And, you know, similar, similar, you, you know, people getting on to, to certain different types of diet. Well, how's that going to work in the, in the greater context of things? Um, yeah, you might be in a family of four. Is everybody going to eat all of the same, or yeah, you know, how's it how's that actually going to work, or is that going to be the undoing? Because mm. you might be picking a certain diet, but yeah, you know, you're one in four. So what are the other three doing? How's it how's that actually going to come together? So yeah, it's sort of having that strategic vision, but then quickly getting down to well, what are the practicalities of it all will it actually work? Um, I, I guess from a personal perspective, like I often do the Mototapu, which is a mountain bike race from Glen Bay to Arrowtown. But it requires quite a lot of training. And so this year I just made the commitment that I'm not going to train for it. It's just too much time and effort with all of the other things I've got going on to actually do that. I'm not going to have enough bandwidth for doing that activity. Or if I did, I'd be taking out, I'd be cutting into a lot of family time. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's again that's that's something that we we don't think about a lot when we're setting setting goals, setting intentions for the year. Is that the context that we're operating within is is vital to be able to kind of go out and and do this stuff? Because as you said, we're not going to be able to click our fingers and just and and get it done for the most part. Um, there are going to be these these massive influences, and like if you had decided that hey. I do want to do the mototapu this year, and you managed to find the the time to do it. You would have enjoyed it, I'm sure. Like it would have been motivating for you, but it is it, it's looking at that context at that point in time, and our context changes all the time as well. As like it it changes, it's like with little kids, it changes on a day to day basis, but but changes on a week to week basis as well. And kind of where you're at with things this year at this point in your life is going to be different to where you were at last year. So just kind of cutting and pasting from last year to this year doesn't always work. It doesn't always work kind of cutting and pasting going to next year as well. One of the other ways that I think about inherent motivation too is that um, part of it is kind of looking at, okay, how much do how much do I enjoy this? But also like what am I what am I doing it for? Am I doing it because I really enjoy the process of it and I love actually doing the task and like for you, enjoy just getting out on the mountain bike and, and riding and going and spinning, spinning the legs, seeing all the awesome stuff? Or am I doing it for like an external outcome where I can say, cool, I've done this, I've done the mahi, now I get the treats with it. And it's the yep. treats that you're after rather than the rather than the work that you put in for it. And like the that external outcome, like it's not it's not a bad thing to get an external outcome, like going to university to to get a degree so that then you can kind of go and do a do a job that you want to do that that needs a degree. Like going and, and doing an MBA for you. I know that you really enjoyed that process of it. You got this external outcome of an MBA, which then opened up opened up doors for you. So external outcomes aren't always that they're not always a negative thing and they're not always don't always encourage less motivation in you. But just I think asking yourself that question, is it like, is it just purely that external outcome that I want and that's why I'm pursuing this? Or is it because I like that process that I'm going through? Or is it because of the feeling that I think I'm going to get when I hit that external outcome? Like obviously I work with people who want to improve their health. Some of those people have specific target weights that they want to get to. 
And you, you ask them, okay, cool. Why do you want to hit that number? And a lot of people will come back and they'll say, oh, because, uh, well, most of them will say, I don't know. But <laughs> some of them yeah, will. But, well, why is that? Why, uh, I guess the question is, why, why is that measure of success important? Yeah. Or, or mm. what is the measure of success, I guess, is the other question. And, and then, yeah. And then if you're talking about, say, I got target weight, why is it XKGs and not YKG? Mm. Uh, yeah. But then yeah, if we're running our, like a, a, a diametrically opposed weightlifter versus marathon runner, well, the, the measure of weight, yeah, it's going to be quite different mm. depending on those two, two things. So like if I go in my context, well, I don't know what I'd have to get down to be a useful marathon runner, but it'd be a lot less than what I am now versus, yeah, I would, if I wanted to actually be good at weightlifting, I'd need to put on weight. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And like, I think there's like, often we're searching for a feeling that we want to, that we think this external outcome will give us. Um, I was working with a guy a little while back and I actually, I really enjoyed his outcome. I was like, sorry, his answer. I was like, mate, why do you want to hit that weight? He's like, I really love the way that my body feels when I'm at that weight. He's like, I've just got more energy. I feel stronger. I feel flexible. I feel all of this other stuff. And I was like, oh, cool. You've, you've really thought about this and you've got an yeah. external outcome that you're shooting for, but you know exactly why you're going to get to do that and you're going to be working on improving those other things as you do it as well. So it's, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's thinking about like, do I want to just put this up on Instagram once I've, once I've clocked it off? A, a guy that I've interviewed a couple of times on the podcast, he's, a, he's an adventure racer and he's turned down doing, I think, three Everest expeditions. Like he could, he's the sort of dude that could just go out and do it but he's like why am i doing this am i doing this for taking the photo at the top or am i doing it for me and like with everest he's that that answer to his questions always been i'm doing it for the photo at the top i'm not doing it for for myself so kind of asking yourself i think a like a version of that question is like am i doing it for the outcome or am i doing it for for the process yeah yeah and look, a question that often comes up in the business context is always you're always asking well what's in it for me or what's in it for them which is a very similar question of just why why are you doing it and uh look, I, do, I watch quite a lot of charlie munger podcasts or or people reviewing and spanking and one of his things is you don't need to be involved in every deal. Some people think for some unbeknown reason, they need to be involved in everything. Usually that you'll be pretty average or if not shit at everything that you try and get involved in. Whereas if you focus up on a, a few things that either you know well or you can be good at, then you'll get some pretty good outcomes whatever they are, which I think is really getting that strategy. Okay. Like in a business context, I tend to stick with stuff that I know well, like ag and energy. Uh, I've, I've, I've already done my 10,000 hours, so I've got a very good base to come from. So the, the not having to go up big learning curves whenever I'm looking at stuff like that. Whereas if I go and look at something else that I'm very unfamiliar with, there's a much bigger learning curve. And then if you bring that back into like, personal health well yeah what what are those things that you like are, are you good at um and that are that are good things for you as a person to be working on and that'll be different for for different people right mm -hmm. yeah so yeah and then your your mate who's like yeah looked at everest multiple times I mean, that, that's the perfect example of not needing to be involved in every deal you don't need to go on every single expedition it's a bit like me with the mototapu. I don't have to race the mototapu every year. Some years it's just not going to make sense. Uh, even though it's literally the finish line is in my backyard. So you'd be like, why wouldn't you? And yeah, 
mean, arguably I could line up in a few weeks time and I would, I would make it from start to finish, but it would be nowhere near in a, in a time that I'd be happy with shooting for. Wouldn't feel particularly nice either if you hadn't put in the training yeah, beforehand. It, it'd definitely be a grind. It'd definitely be a grind that sure. And having done it multiple times, if you've done the training, it's much less of a grind than it is if you haven't, if you haven't done the training. Yeah. You can take in that, that lovely scenery a little bit more rather than just kind of have your head down, peddling hard. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the irony is I think of each month fully absorbed all of the scenery every time I go through that particular gorge. Like, oh, and you spot something different. And obviously the scenery changes all the time, but you, you know, your head comes up at a different time. And you're, oh, well, that's there. Mm. Yeah. When you like... When we're thinking about change and when we're thinking about, okay, cool, we've set the, we've set a strategy, we've set a direction that we want to go to. How do you then work with people or work with businesses on pulling it back to a process? Like here's the, here's this, this direction or this outcome that we want to get to in three years time. I need to set some stuff to do for the next 90 days to start to start the ball rolling on, on moving me in that direction. And I need to set up a little bit of process around that. How do you, how do you kind of take that vision and put it in actionable steps for people over the next week? Yeah, I kind of have a couple of things. One is being really clear on the priority. So what are the things you actually wanting to do because that all the main thing you will do is stop you doing all of the other stuff that's not on priority mm-hmm. and there's always heaps of other stuff you can get involved in i thought you were having a conversation with one of my business partners yesterday about this it's like we've got so many angles we can play on the particular business that actually we just need to focus up and, and pick one and we're going to be good at that one. and then the the other bit is coming down to, well, what are the things that you can actually measure, whether that dates or timelines or weight or speeds or whatever it is, at the end of the day, what you measure, you actually manage, but you can also see progress. So you can actually see that you're getting better. Like if you go and look at, say, people out there that are trying to be the heaviest deadlifter in the world, the, what, the 500, 501 kilos is like the maximum that any human has actually pulled off the floor. Any of those guys that actually did it, they they don't start off just trying to lift 500 kilos all the time like that. They're building up and every, every week they've got milestones that they're wanting to hit in terms of their performance. I use that one because it's like a, it's a big target, but it's also like you have to break it down into achievable steps in terms of building your way to, to that ultimate goal. So those are probably the having clear priorities and knowing what you're going to measure along the way so that a, you can make sure you're measuring something and we'll come back to that, but also you can celebrate when you hit these different you know, milestones or, or metrics in certain time frames. The other important thing about measuring is that you can actually be accountable for what you're doing. And it's only kind of when you like take on that accountability that you'll embrace the change, but you'll also adapt what you're doing to get to the outcome. Because if you kind of like don't take accountability and you just abdicate it and blame it on other people or whatever it is, then there's pretty low chance of you actually getting to those goals, whether they're weekly goals, monthly goals, quarterly goals, annual goals. Yeah, I've found that over and over again that yeah all of the best people one way or another they have they have that in place and you're like musicians they're like oh they're even going through a creative process so it's quite free form and but they're like no by this point in time we're going to have this amount of content out and it'll be in a certain uh, it'll be at a certain standard that we're happy with and if it's not they put in more hours to get it there Mm. so yeah it's in almost all settings, there's that that's the case. Like you go to you go to an awesome rock concert and you're like, wow, that was a that was an amazing experience. 
And the amount of work that went into that amazing rock concert is phenomenal. Yeah. It wasn't like they just turned up and played on the night and you're like, oh, cool. <laughs> no, but they put like months and months and months and weeks and weeks and weeks of work into how to get it all to all to come together and and and, and bring it to that final outcome. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that like that are really it's a really important point is that just the amount of preparation time with it and those picking something to measure and measuring that along the way as well. And one of the things that I see with, with people from a health perspective, and you probably see it from a business perspective as well, is that often people will pick, they'll, they'll choose a measurement and they'll choose a, they'll choose the right thing that they want to measure, but They'll go too hard too early and they'll think, oh, I need to hit this by then. Say like you want to work on your deadlift and you're deadlifting, what, 50 kgs to start with. And you're like, boom, three days time, I'm going to be deadlifting 100. And there's certain things that you can do to, to improve your technique and improve your ability, but that's a, that's a massive jump. Um, and then people get frustrated and they get disheartened because they haven't they haven't hit that first that first point yep. whereas and often it's and often it's realis, unrealistic to to hit that point in such quick amount of time and i think adopting a adopting a student or a beginner mindset around that can be quite helpful when we're thinking about okay this is something new that i'm testing out this is something new that i'm working on it's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. What do I do when I don't hit those those important milestones that I've set for myself? Like how do you how do you work with people when they're not when they're not ticking those off the way that they would like to? Yeah, I might go back like a a couple of paces on that one because I think you kind mm. of touched on a, a pretty in, important point that the moment in time that it that really what was me was when I was I was doing a bunch of stuff out in like the middle of Queensland on on gas fields. There was this big team building event, and I just ended up going along to it because well, I didn't have any other work to do, so I just went and joined into the team building event. And and we got all broken up into teams. People you had no idea really who they were. You just had to to work together in these little teams in the 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 competitive nature in me, I just went, I just wanted to win the, the team building event, which is like a few hundred people, but yeah, you know, still in the team that I was in, I mean, I was like, I want to win. So how am I going to get these other folks that A, I've only just met, but B, I have no idea of their capability of how to get them to win. Um, and to me, it was like fairly obvious what the knack was to to win the team building event it was you always had to get just a little bit better each time you didn't have to be the best from the outset you just had to on each of the little activities you needed to get a little bit faster or a little bit more accurate with the activities each time and make small tweaks not like completely change your game plan each time and um so we we kept doing this and we had math points throughout the course of the the day. And the the person presenting all the awards was Darren Lockyer, is yeah, pretty pretty famous Queensland rugby league player. And and his his thing was like so this whole day was about figuring out how to make those one and two percent improvements and he's like and the team that won and we would buy quite a long margin at that point was the the team that always did the little improvements. When we took a game plan and we just tweaked it for each little event that we had. And whether we got it done faster or we shot more hoops or whatever it was that we needed to do in a particular activity, we always did it a little bit better each time we had a crack at it. And we were always a little bit better than everybody else. And we were so consistent that Everybody else that had big pendulum swings in their performance just didn't amass the score at the end of the day, but 
there was kind of the, it was a long way of coming to the sticking point of we did two things. We kind of embraced, embraced the change and adapted. Uh, but we also recognize the, the small incremental improvements are more valuable than some massive leap forward because we could just build them up over time and we built them up pretty quickly and suddenly we made the improvements, which is then you relate it back to like your personal health or something like that. Yeah. Just the keeping the little improvements coming through and adapting and changing is more likely to get you there than trying to make a massive change because the massive change will be really hard. Whereas the little improvements are actually quite easy to make. Mm, yeah. And so from a, like a practical perspective, is it maybe setting a, setting a smaller milestone initially would be helpful yeah, or, for you? Yeah, or, yeah. Breaking, breaking down that, that big goal into smaller parts. Like I've got a, a good buddy at the moment, Dr. Dark who's training for a marathon and look, he's, you talk to him and like, he's a successful dude and his thing is just to break it down into small bits. And like at the moment he's like, I'm not, I'm not trying to run a marathon. I'm, I'm more just trying to get it at get the building blocks of, of baseline fitness and ability to run. He got, I think he goes, he started off at 5k and now he's moved up to 10k. He wants to run. That's, he's just getting good at running his marathon pace at those shorter distances. Mm. And then, then he'll build it up and build it up and build it up. But he's broken the 42 kilometers down into much, much shorter, more achievable blocks will get them there in time. Yeah. And like with, with all of the stuff, it's that, it's that consistency that we're, that we're aiming for. And that's that consistency where, where improvement and change really, really happens and takes off. And it's like, as you, as you said, that it's very rare that we are able to create a massive change and just have a, have a huge leap forward every now and then, like if there's something from a technique perspective that you change, sometimes that'll give you, it'll give you an extra 10 or 15% because you're just doing something so much more efficiently and effectively. But most of the time it's, it's those little one and 2% gains that slowly add up over time. Yeah. Although I would, I would say even with like some of those, like a technique change or something like that, you, you need to relearn it. So Mm. yeah, it might have the, the technique change could give you say like a ten percent improvement, but when you start doing it, most probably it's not giving you all of the ten percent because you're actually having to to learn or learn or retrain the technique that'll ultimately give you the ten percent improvement. Right? right when we start it, probably probably won't. Yeah, and that's not a defeatist mindset. That's a, more of a pragmatic mindset of like if you actually thought, oh, I'm going to change my technique and I'm going to be 10% better tomorrow. Prob- probably not. Yeah, it's yeah. Pretty, it's pretty unlikely. Yeah, I was talking to, uh, to Portia Bing a couple of months back, who's the New Zealand hurdler, and she, a couple of years back, decided that she needed to change her technique because she was kind of capping out. And it was really challenging because it was just the, it was the Olympic year that she decided that she wanted to change her technique. So she didn't make the Olympic team that year because she made these changes and actually she got a little bit slower initially because she was, she was relearning and she was, she was changing and she'd taken that step back so that now she can come back and she can be faster. But yeah, just as, as you say that sometimes that, that yeah. technique changes is accepting, Hey, I'm still a beginner here. It's okay to go backwards for a little bit because I know that I'm gonna I'm gonna move forward a little bit later. <clears throat> yeah, probably the other thing I'd say about your like beginner beginner mindset or whatever you want to call it, I always I always think about it. It's like, what are you doing every day to get a little bit smarter? And I spent a, a decent chunk of my day whether that reading. Oh, I guess historically people used to call it being well read, but that was before we had the interweb. And now, you know, you can get smarter through lots of different things, like listening to podcasts, 
watching stuff on YouTube, whatever it is. Well, I spend a decent chunk of my day doing that every day uh, because that, that you'll pick up something or learn something or gain an insight that'll enable you to do something something better, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, just exposing yourself to, to new ideas and new new perspectives. Mate, what are you... Where are your growth areas for 2023? What do you want to be working on? Yeah, look, in terms of, uh, I guess, personal stuff, I was actually talking to another one of my buddies, Ryan Mitchell, um, the other week. And I was like, actually, I, the whole of last year, or this 2022 year, I've not really done much by way of like, lifting weight or stuff like that. It's actually something I quite enjoyed. Yeah, back to your feeling thing. I actually like when you're doing that sort of stuff. I feel stronger, but it also I also find it's like a quite a good block of time where you just go and think about stuff, whatever that is that you need to think about. And so, I think that's one area I want to jump back into for next year, doing more of that stuff. I don't know if I'll do my my annual mountain bike race or not yet. Like, a bit of a team in secret. I guess I don't have to decide that in January. That might be a part way through the year after the wind has been or something, decide whether I actually want to want to jump into to that one or not. And then, you know, from a, from a business perspective, I've got a couple of businesses that need to kick a few goals next year. So one, we, we need to get on a bunch more farms. There'll be a lot of focus helping the team achieve that growth. Um, and and then I'm building a factory next year as well. So, yeah, that's going to be a, a big focus is getting that factory built and up and running and commissioned. So, yeah, if we achieve those few things, then, then we'll be having a good year next year. Nice, man. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, and I think I, 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 should, I shouldn't overlook another one. I'm renovating it next year as well. So, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a few goals to kick. Yeah. Um, and... And they've all, they're all miserable. They've all got timelines. They've all got budget. Yeah. I probably should go and fetch some, some goals for the getting back into the gym. What's that going to look like? Although I've still got another goal to check off, I guess, before the end of the summer, which is to get my golf handicap down into single figures. So got to do a little bit more work on that one. Yeah. You I'm, can... I'm stuck on 10. I'm stuck put on the, 10. You got to put the time into that rather than into the gym for the next couple of months, mate. Uh, yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. Practice my short game and all of that sort of stuff, which was yeah, it was kind of uncanny when you were talking about making a technique improvement that gives you a an improvement. I kind of like got quick, quite quickly down to ten, but then I've been stuck on ten for quite some time. So yeah, yeah it's yeah. those it, it, the, those plateau those plateaus can be frustrating as well, mate. So I guess like to to sum up what we've been talking about and to to think about it. So, it's setting some goals or some some visions or some directions for for a, a, a time frame, whether that's the next year, whether that's a five, ten, thirty year thirty year plan, um, of something that's important to you, something that you feel inherently that you want to do it, rather than just that it's, it's something shiny that you'll get at the end, and then breaking it down into into like the small component pieces and setting some some markers along the way of important things to measure to one keep you motivated and keep you trucking but also to measure your progress as well and make sure that you're that you are continuing on the right track and that you get to have those small celebrations as you go as well when you when you kick off a milestone uh, but also keeping like a, a beginner mindset or a student mindset with it as well as that hey you're learning through this process, you're growing through this process, you're not always going to hit, tick off those milestones. And sometimes when you don't, that's okay. Sometimes it's a, it's a point where you need to ask yourself the question, hey, do I need to be doing it a slightly different way? Do I need to work on, on getting a couple of percent better? Or do I need to work on changing my technique for this so that I can move, move forward or move around this this. 10 handicap roadblock that I'm that I'm heading up against at the moment and just kind of most of all 
just trying to enjoy it through the process as well. Yeah, yeah, and I'll probably add one more thing into that last little piece around you were talking about like what what do I need to do? What do I need to do? But I would also say it's figuring out all of those people around you that can actually help you make those those changes and tweaks. It's normally someone with a bit more of an outside in view that will enable you to crack through whatever it is you're trying to crack through. Mm. Uh, as opposed to yeah, you can definitely be self reflective and, and try and figure it out. If you try and figure it out in a vacuum. Your, I guess your your frame of reference is restricted by what you know and what you can see, but it also can be pretty frustrating. Whereas, yeah. Yeah, if you have someone else looking over your shoulder or providing you with a different perspective, that may actually be where you make the breakthrough because you know they've got a different set of eyes. They're looking at things in a different way, yeah. or they may just be looking at you doing the activity so they can go ah. Oh, you're you're doing this thing all the time. If you stop doing that thing, it, it'll probably enable you to make the improvement. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I heard a great metaphor. It's like looking at, at a billboard, like five centimeters away and you can see it, you can see a little bit of it, but often you are way too close to, to it, to really make important changes. Whereas if you get someone who is standing back a little bit further, looking over your shoulder, as you say, and say, Hey, actually you want to move here or you want to do this or you want to want to do something differently and and you know, having that support is like it, it's it's vital and it's great and it's it's often where you do have the opportunity to make those biggest changes yeah yeah and they yeah yeah having a having a few people who are either just peers or mentors or whatever you want to call them they're the ones that normally give you the um the best tips tips to accelerate yourself forward yeah, a hundred percent. And also, uh, one other thing that we talked about was making sure that you don't forget your life context as well, as that whatever you're doing needs to be able to fit into your world without pushing out too many of your other important priorities as well, like your family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 or, or whatever else you you're trying to do. If you, yeah. If you're trying to be a surgeon, then you, there's a whole bunch of commitments that you've already made. So you, your personal health things need to also blend in with the fact that you've already made one fairly big commitment, which is to be a really good surgeon. So, yeah, I suspect if you're trying to do midday workouts as a surgeon, that might be called a hunch. I don't, not that I know mm -hmm. exactly what their calendar looks like, but yeah, yeah, it's just, I'm more using that as an example of putting it into the context of what you are actually able to achieve. Yeah, yeah. We have to ask. We have to ask Wombo on that one whether he gets his midday workouts in or not. Well, he's um, just not an like athlete. He just turns up. No, <laughs> mate. Yeah. It's always a it's always a pleasure to have a chat with you on the on topics like this and and hear your insights. I oh, was just just curious. Do you have a challenge to leave us with today? A challenge? Oh, it's almost like a challenge. A challenge on a challenge to think out what the challenge is. I reckon I'd, the the challenge the the audience to set something for twenty twenty three that is actually achievable, as opposed to something that they on trend or is overly audacious. And by setting something achievable, actually then go and achieve it. So whether that's something that's quite short term and it may only take you a week or a month to achieve, or it's um, something that might take you the whole year to work up to, yeah. Grab hold of something like that. You'd be surprised when it is something achievable. The ability to get great results is definitely within the realm of, of plausible, as opposed to yeah. as opposed to the counter, which is setting something that's just so ridiculously hard to achieve that you actually never get there. Um, yeah, I reckon that that is the actual challenge for anybody setting goals or New Year's resolutions or whatever you want to call them, is to actually put something out there that actually achievable within your skill set, your life balance, all of the other things you're doing. Yeah, yeah, great challenge, mate. 
James Brummer Taylor, thank you so much for getting uncomfortable with me today. No worries, Dizzo. Always good to chat. <laughs>